Hello everyone, this is Damien for episode number three of uh, Beginner's Java. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about um, debugging. So debugging is probably the single most essential skill set when you're learning how to program. Um, debugging is where you take a program that has an error and you stop it from being an error. Now there are two different types of errors that we encounter in Java, or really in any programming language. Um, there are, well, two basic types. So there's what's called a syntax error. And that means you left out something or added something. So a good example of a syntax error would be, see how up here we have hello world? If I added on an extra semicolon, that technically might not throw a syntax error. Um, however, if I were to remove that, then we have a syntax error. Um, so we give this a run, and you'll see that it says down here in our console, exception in thread main java.lang.error unresolved compilation problem. So that means that something is stopping it from compiling. Syntax error, insert semicolon to complete block statements. So that's kind of clear on what it's asking us to do, but not really. And then it says at lesson.main, lesson.java line 4. Now lesson.java, I know that that is, is the file that I just ran. And that colon 4 is the line number. So if I give that a click and come back up here, you'll notice that it's highlighted the line. So then I can come back down and look and it says insert a semicolon. And I go, oh, so I must have left out a semicolon. Boom. Just like that, it's fixed. Now, that's the easy kind of error to fix. The hard kind of error to fix, or even find for that matter, is a logic error. So logic errors are insidious they hide and they are problems with the fundamental way that you thought out your program. So let's talk a little bit about what a logic error might be. So let's change the system.out.println to enter any number. Now, let's think for a minute. What would a good example of a logic error be? And so let's assume that we have a calculator, okay? Uh, this, is, this is something that we'll go into later. But let's say, um, let's say enter number one. And let's make a simple sort of calculator uh, that, that just takes in two numbers. So we'll say int i equals zero, j equals zero. Again, uh, actually, you know what? Number one and number two. Okay, so we have these two numbers. They're both equal to zero right now. So let's say that we're trying to simply make a calculator that adds these two numbers and then outputs the results. So if we were to do something like this, number one plus number two, and then you'll notice for one that's not even proper syntax. Uh, so if we were to do system dot out dot println number one number two, that would technically output a proper result. Um, it would be zero. So let's say that somebody did that. They test it. They see oh okay well zero spits right out, and you know it that's fine. And so then they go, okay, well, you know, now that I have this working the way I want it to, let me put in some values down here. So input, um, I'm sorry, number one equals input dot next int. Number two equals input dot next int. And so what we would then have is these two numbers being entered at the end. So at this point, you know, I'll enter in one number. It doesn't prompt me to because I didn't write any output, but I'll put in seven and then five. 
and then it terminates and I, I still have the zero coming out and the reason why is because I took in the numbers after I'd already printed out the sum. So this is something that would constitute a very, very extremely basic logic error. Um, this type of thing should be very easy to find if you're new to programming. Um, as your programs continue to grow in size and complexity, then these will be a lot harder to find. Um, for example, I have a program that I do at work that's about eight to 10,000 lines of code, uh, and I'm the sole maintainer of it for the moment. And so when something goes wrong in there, I have to go around and check and sort of find everything that's gone wrong. So let's assume, though, that I didn't know that this is what happened. I couldn't just look at all the code. It wasn't all on one page. And I needed to find out, well, why am I getting zero? Zero isn't the number I'm expecting here. So let me check the time. Yeah, I've got plenty. So this is going to be a pretty quick lesson anyways. So what I can do is rather than running it, I can click the button next to it called debug. So if I uh, feel like doing so, I can right click here and go to toggle breakpoint. Um, and from there, I can then go to debug. And when I go to debug, it'll hit what's called a breakpoint and it will stop executing the program and it will allow me much more finite control over the program. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I go to debug, uh, which is this little bug looking thing next to our run button. And you'll see that we have a debug window here. Then we have a lesson with variables, uh, or lesson, a tab with variables. Sorry, cell phone, one moment. Sorry about the delay there. Um, girlfriend's phone was ringing. So we stopped at line four. Uh, and you'll notice that we also have these variables up here, args, which is empty. Um, we'll talk again more about what args are later. And then there's breakpoints, where I have two breakpoints at, line four and line five. So at this point, we are able to execute the program how we want at line four. So we come down here and we look at the console, and the console is presently empty. Now there are two buttons that we have here that we want to sort of focus on right now, or well, there's really just one. Uh, there's step into, which we'll get into once we get into methods, but then there's step over. Step over is F6. So if we go here and we come down here and then we press F6, you'll notice that it says enter number one. So at that point, you know, we can hit F6 again and you'll see that input was created up here. So if we fold this down, it shows us that input has a whole bunch of stuff in there. We don't really care to go over any of that right yet. We'll get to that much, much later. That'll actually probably be in advanced Java because scanner's pretty intimidating. Now, if we hit the F6 button again, now we're on line 10. That's the current uh, instructor point as signified by this little blue arrow. If we hit it again, we should get two new variables, number one and number two, and both of them should have a, a value of zero. So we do that and we can see number one and number two were both created. So now at this point, we know going into this print that we have number one and number two both equal to zero. So when they're added, of course we're expecting zero. So again, we hit F6, the zero comes out, and then, oh, I'm supposed to enter numbers here. So I enter five, and then as you can see, this changes to yellow up here because it shows that I just changed it. Then I enter a six down there and step over, and this also changes to six. And again, there's no output after that. It just shows that I'm down at this closing scope bracket for main. So at this point, I could realize, oh, I'm an idiot. You know, this should be down further. And, you know, so I'll change that around. And hey, now it'll work how I expect it to. And so that's kind of the goal of debugging is that you, you end up with this much better idea of how things are working. And so you'll notice that it is in a debug perspective. So you can either go back to Java or Java EE as you're more comfortable with either. Um, 
And so that's basically all I wanted to cover on this lesson, is that there are tools here that are very, very powerful, that will allow you to better understand what your program's doing. Do not be afraid of them, and if you ever end up with uh, an error down here that you don't understand, I'm going to give you guys the best advice you've ever gotten. Google it. Honestly, Google is an absolutely amazing resource if you have specific questions about Java. Um, alternatively, you can come to me, and if I don't know the answer, I'm just going to go Google it and I'll get back to you. <laughs> Alright, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, my name's Damien, and I hope you'll join me for the next video. Thank you.